Will the wings break under extreme stress? What happens if a plane is hit by lightning? Can the plane land on water? We'll find out in today's video. Hi everyone, I'm Mark. I'm an Airbus captain for a commercial airline and you're watching Pilot Explains. And today we're gonna to go through the most common fears of flying and why you can feel safe on any airliner today. The wings moving, completely normal thing. They're designed to do that. When an airline is designed, they design the wings to have a degree of movement in them, especially for when you're in turbulence. You don't want them rigid. It would stress the aircraft. When you design an airliner, you design the wings to take a maximum amount of load. And then they'll build a jig, they'll put the airliner in it and they'll bend the wings up until they snap. The current Boeing 777 went 150% past its design limit load. Something that would never happen in flight. So you're quite safe, the wings are not gonna go anywhere. The new composite wings on the 787, they actually went up 7.8 meters. When you watch them on takeoff, you'll see the wings lift up as the lift generated off the wing. Quite safe, they're not gonna fall off. There's many types of turbulence. The one that most people are scared of is clear air turbulence. We're flying along on a nice clear day up at height and all of a sudden the plane starts shaking and bumping around. You're quite safe, the aircraft is not gonna fall out of the sky. It's designed to take it. There's a variety of reasons. It could be a shift in the wind. There's great big tunnels of, of fast moving air called jet streams. As you come in and out of those, you get bumps. If you're sitting in it, you can be sitting in there with 200 mile of wind behind you and it's smooth as silk, but when you leave that, it gets a bit rough. When you're coming in to land on a really windy day, especially at Manchester, if the wind's from the north, it's coming over the terminal, it's coming over, it's being churned up by all the stuff that's on the ground. That's called mechanical turbulence. It's not very pleasant, but it's not dangerous. We train regularly in simulators in bumpy conditions. And if we're up at height, we have charts that show us where this turbulence will be. We know when we're coming towards it, so we can mitigate things by slowing the aircraft down slightly. It has a special speed to go through bumpy air. We'll know ahead where it's coming because we'll hear people on the radio talking to air traffic control asking, is it bumpy ahead? I'm getting bumps here. I'm at this height, it's bumpy here. So we can descend or we can climb and we can get out of it. So it's quite safe. It just feels a bit uncomfortable really. Some days we're flying around and we know there's thunderstorms around. On our flight plans, they show on the chart where these storms are, so we know when to expect them. We have apps that we can look at before we leave and we can see where they are. When we're in the aircraft, we have a very, very good weather radar system and it uses a Doppler radar. It sends out a radar from the nose of the aircraft and it picks up large water droplets that you get in the cloud and it bounces back and it paints it on our screen. It comes in different grades. Green is just wet. Yellow is getting a little bit nasty and red, really, you really want to avoid red. So we can see these storms up ahead, even at night on our screen. So we know we can turn around and we can go around them and we negotiate with air traffic control and say, we want to turn left by X amount of degrees and avoid this weather. You've got to clear them at height by at least 20 miles. You've got to be over them by at least 5,000 feet and you stay well away from them. Occasionally, aircraft will get hit by lightning. Most of the time, you don't even know it's happened. Sometimes you'll land and you'll walk around the aircraft on your inspection and you might find a little burn hole. The engineers will come and inspect the aircraft and it's back in the air very, very quickly. Sometimes you get a bit more burning, but the aircraft is fully shielded against it and the systems aren't affected. All you're gonna hear is a little crackle on the radio every time there's a bolt of lightning near you. So we're making an approach to an airport. There's thunderstorms all in the area. We know about them. To mitigate this problem, we carry extra fuel. We can sit there and circle in a holding pattern. We can sit there for a significant amount of time and wait for the storms to blow through. If they're too bad, we can go around them. And if they're just not moving, we always have at least one diversion airport that we can divert to that will have good weather and we can get in without any problem whatsoever. If it's a stormy day, we sometimes have two or more airports that we can go to where the weather's perfectly acceptable and we won't have a problem landing. Some of you guys might be worried. What happens if one of the pilots becomes ill? 
Well, there's always at least two of us in the flight deck. If one of the guys becomes ill, then we'll get the cabin crew in, we'll give them some oxygen if need be, assess their situation. They may recover fine, they may be able to continue with the flight, or they may become what we call incapacitated. So they take no further part in that flight. The cabin crew may give them some oxygen to see if we can bring them round, but if they really can't fly anymore, it's no, again, not a big deal. One of us can land the aircraft, and also the aircraft can land itself. In the extremely rare scenario that both of us are taken unwell, some airlines train their cabin crew how to use the radios. They can call for help, they can be talked down by trained people and set the aircraft up for an automatic landing where it will land, it will stop itself on the runway and everything will be fine. Again, it's nothing to worry about. It's the same procedure if we have an unwell pilot to an unwell passenger. If they're really not very well, we will divert to the nearest airport. If you're flying around Europe, there's airports everywhere. Very, very easy to get in, very, very easy to get back out, and we try and pick one where we know there's good hospitals. What happens if we hit a bird? Well, again, it's generally non event. Depends where it hits on the aircraft. I've had them bounce off the nose before, I've heard them hit the wings. Normally a quick inspection by an engineer once we're on the ground and the aircraft's good to go. If it goes through the engine, again, it's normally a non-event. If it goes through the centre of the engine, the core, that requires a bit more of an inspection, but if it just goes around the core and through the main blade, it, again, it's not a problem. If it hits some probes or does some damage to some sensors, they'd have to have a bit more of a look at. But generally, it's not a big problem. I know some people have asked what happens if it hits the windscreen. Well, the windscreens are massively thick. They're at least nine layers of glass and heating elements, and they're heated, and they are actually slightly flexible. They've got a little bit of give, so if a bird hits the windscreen, the windscreen has a little bit of give, and it bounces off. At worst, it might crack the outer layer. You've still got another eight layers, quite safe. We have prevention of wildlife around the airports. There's a guy drives around in a car, he has a flare gun, it makes a loud bang, it scares the birds off. We put all our lights on as we're coming into land and as we take off and that scares the birds away, plus the noise of a great big airliner hurtling down the runway. Gets them out of the way quite well. So the next one is a fire on board. People are very, very worried about this. The first thing we do, we identify where the fire is. If it's in the engines, we get an alert in the cockpit. We have fire extinguishers in the engines and we put the fire out. In the tail, we have a little mini engine called an APU, auxiliary power unit. That supplies electrics and air conditioning when we're on the ground and it can do it in flight as well. Again, that's got a fire extinguisher. We can put that out. The most likely cause we see on flights, we get the smoke alarm in the toilets going off. Someone's gone in there, had a vape, had a cigarette, set the smoke alarm off. We get a load of alarms going off in the flight deck. The cabin crew get a load of alarms and they go in very, very quickly and we have procedures, we have fire extinguishers on board to put it out. Even the toilet bins have built-in fire extinguishers. So we identify where the fire's coming from and we put it out. One of the new ones that's come out recently is we have new procedures for lithium battery fires. The same batteries that you have in your phones, your laptops and your iPads have procedures for that. If we have one of those fires, we generally divert the aircraft and get the offending battery off the aircraft. In the cockpit, there's two main types that we deal with and again every six months we train for this in the simulator. We can have smoke coming off the air conditioning systems or we can have electrical smoke. There are procedures for that. We isolate the system and we just switch it off. We have fire extinguishers in the flight deck and like I said we train for this regularly so really there's nothing to worry about. The cabin crew have special procedures on board as well. They have smoke hoods that supply them with oxygen, they have fireproof gloves, and they have their fire extinguishers. Our cabin crew are incredibly highly trained to deal with these fires, and again, they regularly go for training sessions to deal with these onboard flyers. The other thing that may happen is on takeoff or landing, if we have an engine fire, we stop the aircraft, we know which direction the wind's coming, and we position the aircraft so the wind blows the flames away from the aircraft. This came about after a an incident in Manchester many years ago on a British Air Tour 737. So we park the aircraft, we shut the engines down, the wind is blowing the flames and the smoke away from the fuselage and the fire crew, if it's after take or before takeoff, they will be there almost immediately. And if we're landing, they'll already be sitting in there waiting for us as soon as we land. They'll follow us down the runway and they'll be there with 
They're special fire trucks that are designed just for aviation fires. And once we've stopped, the fire crews turn up, they'll be fighting the fire. The cabin crew, their main job is to look after you. They'll be getting you off that aircraft as quickly as they can. There'll be cabin crew on the ground to guide you away from the aircraft, telling you which direction to go, and we'll make sure everyone's off. The captain, unfortunately, is the last one to leave the aircraft, and I have to walk that aircraft and make sure there's no one left. Another big concern is what happens if the oxygen supply fails or the cabin depressurizes. Well, every single seat in the cabin has an oxygen mask above it, and as soon as the cabin goes past 14,000 feet, these masks will drop down. You get the mask and you give it a pull, and pulling it activates an oxygen generator. It's a little chemical block that sits above your seat, and as it slowly burns, it gives off pure oxygen. And you put your mask on and it will give you a positive flow of oxygen for up to 22 minutes. In the flight deck, we will have our oxygen masks on. They're a dedicated supply. We have oxygen tanks for us. And we will be starting what's called an emergency descent. And we will descend the aircraft very quickly. From 35,000 feet, we need to get down to 10,000 feet. In an emergency descent, we can do that in around four minutes. So you're not gonna run out of oxygen. Around Europe, there's the highest bit of ground we have is Mount Blanc near Geneva. You can be past that in four minutes if you're up at height. Another one I get asked is, can the aircraft land on water if we have an emergency ditching? Well, it's been proved it can. Sully did it in the Hudson with an Airbus. There was one many years ago in Africa with a 767 that had been hijacked and ran out of fuel because the hijackers wouldn't let them land. If we have this scenario where we're looking like we may have to land on water, we've already extinguished every single option. We've run through every checklist. We've tried every diversion. We've tried to get engines going. There's different checklists if you have dual engine failure after takeoff or if you have it at height. We have tried everything before we do that. And I've got to say, it's incredibly, incredibly rare it happens. But as we saw on the Hudson, it is possible and it is completely survivable. Every single person walked away. So in conclusion, you are incredibly, incredibly safe in an aircraft. Your odds of dying in a plane crash is one in 11 million. Your odds of dying in a car crash is one in 5,000. The most dangerous part of your day will be driving to that airport. Flying is much safer than driving. Right, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you've overcome a fear of flying yourself, feel free to let us know in the comments. Don't forget to check out the playlist in the description for more Pilot Explains videos and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next one.